Well guys, it's October 14th, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. This is two days after I shot my buck. That will be in episode 2. You can watch it on my homepage, Mid Michigan Whitetails, or you can go to my YouTube page, Mid Michigan Whitetails YouTube. Today we're doing some doe management. Uh, if a decent buck comes by, Chris, my stepbrother, has never shot a buck before, so we might take a buck. Otherwise, we're going to try to take some of these does off the farm today. So stick with us. Should be a good day. Temperatures hovering right around mid-30s. And uh, pressure's doing pretty decent. And hopefully uh, we put one down tonight. October 15th, about 1 in the afternoon. I'm gonna start every week adding some type of tip in. Something to help your deer hunting that works for me personally. Something I've been seeing a lot on a lot of threads is people talking about seeing a lot of does, not seeing a lot of bucks. Does are extremely important, more important than a lot of people think when it comes to buck and also mature buck heard how they socialize and how much activity you have on your property. I could go on forever about this, but I'll try to wrap it up in a short segment for you. What I personally like to do, and I'll explain at the end, what I personally like to do is I'll hunt does on my property, but I only shoot the does that I know are five plus in age, which is extremely hard to tell, but usually they're much bigger than the other does. And I try to hunt the ones that don't have fawns with them anymore. Um, the reason why is doe groups core in a much smaller area than a mature buck can. And they don't, does usually don't, you know, move around too much during the run. They, they kind of stay in their area and that's what can cause the lockdown effect. So if you're out there shooting all your doe groups or your monarchs of the group, then what can happen is these does that lose the monarch, lose the leader of the group, they can disperse. Without those does on your property, you can have a bad rut. So what I personally like to do is I only shoot the old does that aren't dropping fawns anymore, or I'll shoot like wandering does, the occasional doe that you see coming in from your neighbors all the time. If she's living over there, she does nothing for you. But if you know you have does living in your sanctuary or in your thicket or on your property, those are those you want to keep because they're on your property. You want to feed them. You want to hold them there. Those are the does that are going to attract the mature bucks. And then if you have the available space or can divide up your, your thickets or however to relieve social pressure, when the does come of age in that group, they will also stay on the property. And then they will fawn on that property. And that will create other doe groups. I have six to seven doe groups between two to six does in each group living on my 50 acres, which sounds crazy, and it is. I go down into you know a, a three, four acre thicket, and I can jump 12, 14, 15 does at a time. One, we have the ag around us to support that. And then we have our food plots where they move from the bed through the food plots, and then they mosey on to the ag. And that's how I support that many does. Having that many does doesn't necessarily mean that many bucks. Um, I, I do have to shoot a lot of does this year. I am a little over what I wanted to be at. But holding those does does create a better rut. Having a more diverse age class of does creates great, you know, 
a pre-rut, peak rut, post rut, and they're all coming in at different times. It creates a lot of movement, you draw in a lot of satellite bucks, and it really just expands your hunting and, and your social, you know, your social standing among the deer herd and you know how effective your grunts are and your rattling. Because if there's not does there, there's not gonna be mature buck activity in, in mature buck rutting. If there's not mature buck rutting, you grunting in a stand, one, there's probably not a mature buck in your area. But two, if there is, he's gonna know, well, this isn't normal, this is kind of abnormal. That's not right, I'm not gonna come in. I'm not gonna go to that, that's just not correct. Versus if you have an area with a lot of does and you're holding a lot of bucks and you have all these deer and they're socializing in these groups, there's going to be more of that interaction. By more of that interaction, then a mature buck's going to believe more that, okay, I can see that buck over there being, you know, grunting, or I could possibly see these bucks sparring. Now I'm going to investigate. Does play a super essential, essential role on your property. Like I said, I personally only shoot the wandering does that are coming in from my neighbors or the mature does that are barren and not producing on my property anymore. It's hard to tell that, but if you're out there enough and you can pattern them, it's a great tactic and it's a little tip that can have fantastic results later in the season for you. this morning, hence the late interview. Um, no mature mature buck movement so far. Had that little guy and some does move through. Almost driving around here, I seen some other does uh, moving from the thicket actually into the corn right down here. Today I'm actually sitting uh, back over that food plot that you've seen in episode one. I actually switched the stand I used to be directly in front of me on the opposite tree line and my the only way I could really hunt it was when my scent blew kind of toward the north over here and then it went over the food plot and and it just it was a it was a mess and so I opted to move it over here my bow my bow shots are 30 40 yards now uh, next year I'll have to do some cutting and clearing to make the food plot bigger but this is just better for the wind and it's better access. So now I have a little bit of thickness, a little thicket down in front of me here. and I have my food plot out in the front, I'll show you. Then my 20 acre sanctuary. This is the other side than the side that uh, I shot my buck on. So this is the complete northern side of the, the sanctuary. Then I have a small CRP field behind me. I plant I replanted it this year and it didn't get too tall so it's only about shin high all the way across but the neighbor's side over here which is I mean directly over here like I said I I have neighbors too and I'm I have to access here through his property and he's awful close to me but his side's a little taller but most of my deer come from across the CRP field there's a creek back there they'll come up out go across the field and come into this plot or I'll pull them out of my sanctuary all in all it's been a good morning so far pretty good activity it's just cold <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to stick it out for I, I wore my my mid-weight gear didn't wear my cold weather gear so stay with me and let's, let's hope for a good one
October 19th, about 5 in the afternoon. I'm doing the evening hunt here. I decided to come down and sit in my gun blind. Uh, I've talked about that before. Yesterday morning, I had probably one of the largest shooters on the farm show up on camera. We don't have a name to him. Um, he's actually an unknown buck. I've seen him elsewhere, just not roaming here. He came in off the creek line to my north, moved through, made a bunch of rubs, and I believe at 10.30 I caught him moving back toward the creek where I believe he laid down at. Last night I tried to hunt him down on the creek. I went down where I thought he'd be going to my east and going back to the cornfield I believe he's coming out of. Uh, it was unsuccessful. Unfortunately, I did see about 20 deer last night. I don't believe I have really any footage of them. It was so dark and they all came through. I had to sit in the stand for about 45 minutes after dark because they just kept coming and kept coming through the creek. He could have walked through at that point. I, I don't know. I'm hoping he decided to hang out here a little longer. Um, you know, he could very well come back through today, or maybe he wrapped up and around and he could come from behind me today. Hopefully, my scent contains my contains itself a little bit in here. There's some brand new fresh rubs from this morning. Nothing on camera. I don't have him anywhere else, so I think he's coming off that creek line. We'll have to see. I don't really expect much for tonight. The, the weather's not real good. It's too warm. It's low pressure. Moon phase isn't great. It's just not a super great day. But when you get a good buck on camera, you, you know, you gotta go after it. And uh, you know, things happen in threes around here. He didn't show up this morning on camera, but he could very well be right down there in that creek line and he could come up in here. So I'm gonna give it a shot. If nothing else, this will close week three. Um, the Michigan Whitetails, and I'll start week four probably with a Sunday hunt. About Sunday night, I believe, will be the next time I'm going to hop out into the stand. So I hope you guys enjoy our content here at the Michigan Whitetails. If we don't put a big buck down tonight, then I'll see you in week four.